Great. Thank you so much for having me today. So uh, our organization, Environmental Health Trust, is a scientific think tank. And you can go to ehtrust.org, ehtrust.org, to learn more about everything I'm talking about. Um, and to see our scientific advisors, we do we publish research, we uh, educate policymakers, and we educate the public. And our goal is technology that is safe for all, not technology which is uh, harmful to health. Unfortunately, at the trajectory that technology is moving in the the fast pace, uh, it is not moving in the right direction, and we are steering it back to a more sustainable and healthy uh, landscape because uh, wireless technology, it's wireless everything these days, is not safe. Um, while we might assume that you can purchase it off the, se- the, sh- the shelf, you know, if you if you can buy it, of course, it is safe. That was certainly my assumption when I was started off on this journey. Uh, But as it turns out, and like with all of these other things, all of these other technologies in our lives and the food system and uh, drugs and so forth, there really is um, a multi, uh, a very powerful industry and an ever-growing science that indicates that we need to take a step back and ensure safety before we move forward. So I'm going to show you my slides now and... Let me just share them with you. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk about wireless today, wireless radiation, be it your cell phone, cell towers. What you're seeing here in this picture is when I went to speak at the Electromagnetic Fields Conference in 2019. That was a medical conference where, where doctors got credit Uh, continuing education credit for learning about electromagnetic fields, wireless radiation. And where I stayed in San Francisco, this was the view out my window. This is a small cell facility. Is there wireless antennas here? And my um, window was right here and someone else's window was right there. So here was a short cell tower right across from my window. Now you can't see it. You can't smell it. You can't taste it. But cell towers, small cells, 5G, all wireless antennas, they emit microwaves, microwave radiation, but at very low levels, not enough to heat your tissue. Obviously, microwaves can cook and they can heat things up to where you can taste it. It's hot. It changes the the uh, the tissue when you cook meat, for example, but these levels are much lower than what you would find in a microwave oven. They are artificial. They are not uh, natural waves that you find. Although there are natural uh, microwaves and radio frequencies, these are very different. A wireless signal is an information carrying wave. There's data on the, uh, the carrier wave, which is pulsed. It is digital. You might hear it referred to as radio frequency radiation, It is a kind of non-ionizing radiation, meaning it's not atomic radiation or nuclear radiation. It doesn't immediately um, impact the cell in the same way. It doesn't directly cause, um, you'll often hear, well, it's it's non-ionizing, so it's not harmful. But actually, non-ionizing radiation can have impacts at the cellular level, making changes in biochemical changes Uh, which do have an impact, do have a health impact. So I'm going to talk to you about cell towers, um, devices that are in your home. And uh, this is a lot of material. So thank you for bearing with me. And I'm really excited that I'll be speaking on the panel to also answer more questions. So first, what emits uh, wireless radiation? I talked about towers And I'm going to show you some more pictures of cell towers and so forth and small cells. But in our homes, we also have not just the cell phone, but also wireless phones like cordless phones, uh, ear pods, Bluetooth, laptops, computers, your Wi-Fi router. In schools, there are access points. They look like Wi-Fi routers, but they're access points. You have a printer, which might be wireless, video game consoles, tablets, 
anything that's wireless, and there's so many more, of course, now in smart homes, anything that's wireless emits radio frequency radiation. Now, unlike the United States, several countries are actually moving forward with awareness programs on uh, wireless and electromagnetic fields. So this image, and I did overlay some words here for us, is actually from the French Polynesia government awareness program on electromagnetic fields. And it has a video where they have this woman with a cell phone and they show how the radiation is sort of coming out. They have a video game console, Wi-Fi router, and then they have pictures of the kitchen with the cordless phone, the handset, the smart light, um, a fridge, sources of electromagnetic fields in your home. And they educate the public on here are some sources and here's how you can reduce exposure. I'm going to talk about all that, but I'm going to start out with um, what we're talking about, some of the policy issues, the legal issues, the liability issues, and then talk to you about how you can reduce exposure. So right now we're actually almost past 5G deployment. We're amidst heavy 5G small cell facilities being deployed all across the United States and the world. So here's two examples of what is called a, a small cell, even though there's really nothing small about it. You have a light pole that might have antennas fixed to it or poles that are going up in front of homes in neighborhoods. The 5G network is really a marketing term used to promote the idea that neighborhoods and local communities should give their rights of way away to allow these structures to be put in front of homes, schools, businesses, workplaces. And the Federal Communications Commission estimates over 800,000 new wireless sites in the United States alone. And that's millions of antennas because each site can have several antennas on it. In order to what they say to tie together the internet of things, those are um, uh, smart devices, all of these you know, self-driving cars, machine to machine communications, um, drones that may be uh, needed for delivering prescriptions and so forth. There's all kinds of wireless uh, networks that are being designed that industry says requires all of these new short cell towers, or also there's macro towers, tall towers that are being put into communities. And worldwide, we're talking about millions of uh, cell tower bases in countries across the world with 500 billion devices expected to be connected to the internet by 2030. And of course, there's more, there's actually, you know, there's more mobile phones than people in the world. Um, and there's more, and, and th I'm sorry, than, um, than bathrooms, than public bathrooms. And no end to, you know, what age a cell phone is given to a person. It used to be, I remember when certainly most of you on the call, I hope, uh, remember when, you know, it would be unheard of to give a cell phone to your teenager. This was for adults, for workers, for if you had an important job that required a phone. Now, children are being handed cell phones, their first cell phone, their own cell phone. And 10 is the median age to give a child, to give someone a cell phone. So, this is a picture that was sent to me by, I, we are sent pictures all the time that look like this with cell antennas right in front of windows. And it was sent to me with the question, is this safe? You know, I'm getting headaches. Um, tell me, you know, what should I do? I'm new to this issue. So this is a small cell, quote unquote, small cell right in front of the bedroom window of this man who sent me the picture. What you need to know about small cells is these antennas emit frequencies, which are low, mid, and high band uh, radio frequencies. They're both 5G technology, but also a lot of these are actually emitting 4G because 4G is a backbone for 5G technology. And of course, these antennas with these 
quote unquote, 5G networks are being put closer to home schools and workplaces than ever before. It used to be that antennas were on cell towers, on mountaintops, are far from where we lived. Many communities, of course, have setbacks that don't allow tall cell towers right near homes, but now we're getting them right in front of home. So here is a quote unquote small cell. You have an equipment box that might be on the pole as well. Sometimes those make noise. They also block sidewalks. Here's a facility that's right um, up on this three level home. And in fact, as I heard about it, one of the rooms on this building is all set up with equipment, with electrical equipment to power this antenna. Since 2004, the International Association of Firefighters has officially opposed cell towers on their stations. And you can go online and read their, their statement and their opposition, where they say that until there is, they won't allow these antennas on their stations until there is a study with the highest scientific merit and integrity on health effects of exposure to low intensity radio frequency, microwave uh, radiation until that is conducted and it's proven that such, such sightings are not hazardous to the health of our members. And they say that because many years ago, there was antennas that were uh, placed on uh, fire stations in California and the members began to develop neurological issues. And they had, there was a press release, there was a lot of media on this and they have lobbied since then in opposition to cell antennas on their stations or near their stations. In fact, many years ago, not so many, I guess in 2019 and also previous to that, when there were state uh, regulations that would allow cell antennas on stations, the California firefighter unions lobbied hard to carve their stations out of that legislation. In other words, to not let their stations be places where you could place these antennas. And they were actually successful. They were able to stop their stations from being places where you could fast track 5G towers in California. And what I'm gonna play for you now is actually a video of a 30 second ad that they put together in San Francisco when there was a, a similar, a very local uh, action that would have allowed these antennas right in front of fire or on fire stations. Oops. This one, I've got- Start at the end. Firefighters living and working beneath cell towers like this one have gotten sick, headaches, extreme fatigue, memory loss, and brain scans show that firefighters exposed to toxic RF radiation experience cell death, ALS, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's disease. Now, the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors has approved cell tower installations on fire stations in neighborhoods like yours. Call the Board of Supervisors and tell them to stop the cell towers now. And that's just one of uh, many organized efforts to, to slow down, to stop cell towers from being so close to where we live, work, and play. In fact, there was a bill in 2019 in California that would have fast-tracked uh, 5G small cells across the state. And although it passed, uh, the governor vetoed it and there was massive opposition. Now, unfortunately, in about half of United States states, there are local, there, there are laws at the state level that really um, uh, just run right over and restrict local authorities from having a say in where these installations will be in their communities. And a lot of groups in various states are organizing in those states to get those laws changed to allow for local authorities to have a say and not be stripped of their authority regarding these uh, kinds of installations. Mm -hmm. 